Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to uh, Costa Lager Community Church on uh, September 25th. Um, a few notes uh, or uh, announcements. Um, we'll be celebrating the Lord's Supper next week. Um, we also uh, have a note from Dennis and Berlin that uh, they're not here on Tuesday, so they're gathering at their house is uh, going to be postponed till the following week. We're glad to see the church in one piece after all the earthquakes we've had this week. And uh, I hope, from what I heard, everybody fared well with no uh, casualties or, or damage, but it has been a very rocky week. Uh, we would like to ask for prayer for Sue and Elle, as well as for Robert, as they're going through some, uh, some health issues and, and treatments. And we pray, Father, that uh, they will give the doctors wisdom to, uh, to bring them back to full potential and, and bless them with good health. You, we ask Laura to do that also. Um, please join me with the opening prayer, and then we'll uh, continue with uh, the service. Almighty God, to whom hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of your hearts by the pen inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may be perfectly love you and worthily praise your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join the standing singing Because He Lives.
first reading of uh, Zechariah 8, starting with verse 1. The word, of the, Lord, the word of the Lord of hosts came, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am zealous for, for Zion with great zeal. With great fervor I am zealous for her. Thus says the Lord, I will return to Zion and dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Thus says the Lord of hosts, old men and old women shall again sit in the street of Jerusalem, each one with his staff in his hand. The streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in its streets. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the land of the east and from the land of the west, and I will bring them back, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. They shall be my people, and I will be their God, in truth and righteousness. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am determined to do good to Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Do not fear. These are the things you shall do. Speak each man the truth to his neighbor. Give judgment in your gates of truth, justice and peace. Let none of you think evil in your heart against your neighbor, and do not love a false oath. For all these are things that I hate, says the Lord. Then the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, There shall be joy and gladness and cheerful feasts in the house of Judah. Therefore you must love truth and peace. Thus says the Lord of hosts, People shall yet come, the inhabitants of many cities. The inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go and pray before the Lord, and seek the Lord of hosts. I myself will go also. Yes, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, In those days ten men from every language of the nation shall grasp the sleeve of a Jewish man, saying, Let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Go to the next hymn when we all get to heaven. Gather now. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare us to place. When we all Yeah. 
chapter of Genesis. This reading is a, a bit of a bummer. It's a great it looks start. As, it looks as if the, uh, the writer has been checking the TV news lately or reading our newspapers. In the course of time, Cain, Cain presented some of the Lord's produce as an offering to the Lord. And also Abel presented an offering, some of the first fruits, firstborn of his flock and their fat portions. The Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but he, had, he did not have regard for Cain and his offering. That's because it was not a blood offering. Cain was furious, and he looked despondent. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you furious? And why do you look despondent? If you do what is right, won't you be accepted? But if you not, do not do what is right, sin is crouching at the door, and its desire is for you but you must rule over it. Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? Cain replied, I don't know, am I my brother's keeper? Cain had a great, 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 great grandson named Lamech, who had two wives. Lamech said to his wives, Ana and Zillah, hear my voice. Wives of Lamech, pay attention to my voice. This is like a road rage story. I have killed a man for wounding me. I have killed a young man for striking me. And if Cain is to be avenged seven times over, then for Lamech, it will be 70 times seven. We need an antidote to that. So let's read together Psalm 133. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. It is like fine oil on the head running down on the beard, running down Aaron's beard onto his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon falling on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has appointed the blessing of life forevermore. Please join us in singing, He Touched Me. Burden.
warmed up this evening? From the uh, oft quoted Matthew 18, Jesus said, If your brother sins against you, go and rebuke him in private. If he listens to you, you have won your brother. But if he won't listen, take one or two more with you, so that by the testimony of the two or three witnesses, every fact may be established. If he pays no attention to them, tell the church. But if he doesn't pay any attention even to the church, let him be like an unbeliever and a tax collector to you. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how many times could my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? I tell you, not as many as seven, Jesus said to him, but seventy times seven. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in the prayers of the people where the people read the letters and words in bold print. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you have taught us to offer prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. So we ask you mercifully to receive the prayers we make here today. Inspire your church with the spirit of truth and unity and grant that we who confess your holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. We pray you also, Lord, to lead the nations of the world into the way of righteousness and to guide and direct their leaders so that your people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. Grant to the governments of Mexico, Canada, and the United States and to all persons in authority that they may truly and impartially administer justice, uphold integrity and truth, restrain evil, and maintain true religion and virtue. We pray for peace in the world. Make us to see, so Lord, both protect the innocent, restrain evil leaders who stir up nation against nation, and raise up leaders who will inspire the way to unity and peace. Give grace, our Father, to Pastor Al and Sue, and to all who minister the gospel that by their life and teaching they may faithfully proclaim your word and rightly administer your sacraments. Help us each to fulfill your great commission, that we may be our love to our families, friends, and families. Give your heavenly grace to us who worship you, that with reverent and obedient hearts we may hear and receive your holy word, truly serving you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. And we ask you in your goodness, Lord, to comfort and relieve all who in this transitory life are in trouble, need, sickness, grief, or any other adversity, especially those for whom our prayers are desired. And let us mention those who heard earlier. Alan Sue Stedick, Robert, Laura, and others whom we might name. We pray for those whom we love. We pray together now as our Lord taught us so. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be done, thy will be done. Give us this day our day to live, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
I've been talking on the theme for the last several weeks about walking each other home, which we do as a church. And so I'd like to reflect on how we see ourselves as church. And I'd like to start with the question, where did we get this word, church? The Scottish ancestors used to talk about the kirk. And if you're Dutch, you know about the kirk. And if you're German, you know about kirche. And if you're Ukrainian, you know about Cherkova. And they all sound pretty much the same. And they come from Greek, because Greek was the first language of the church. And I've listed before you the word kyrios, which means the Lord. And so the ancient church used to pray, Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Below that word you see kyriakos. That means, that's the adjective form, it means belonging to the Lord, Kyriakos. So the church is the Kyriakos. The church is the people who belong to the Lord. Which sort of means, you know, that you really can't go to church because you are the church. But of course, we've come to use the word in a range of meanings to include buildings as well as people. But most importantly, we are the church. And there is a marvelous picture of the church in that passage in Zechariah. It was written Oh, probably in the 400s BC, after uh, the Jews had returned from the exile, after the second temple was built, or at least starting to be built, and God says, I'm jealous for my people. I'm determined to do good to my people. God is determined to give us, he says, good and joy and gladness and requires of us in that passage that we speak the truth to our neighbor, that we practice justice, that we pursue peace, and that we have no evil thoughts towards our neighbor. Well, that's okay for the Jews of the diaspora, the Jews who were dispersed and hoping to come home. But in Jesus, we have become part of that covenant. So those promises all apply to us. And at the end of that passage, there's an astonishing couple of lines. You have this picture of the Jews returning from the diaspora to the Holy Land, to Jerusalem, to go up to worship at the annual feasts. And you get this picture of 10 Gentiles grabbing hold of the sleeve of a Jew and saying, let us go with you. And the Jew looks at them and he says, why? Because we've heard that God is with you. We're that diaspora. Do we hear people saying, let us come with you because 
we've heard that God is with you. I had a mini version of that experience a couple of weeks back. I was at a party, and the hostess said to me, um, you're a priest. And I said, well, yeah. She said, I have a friend in Canada who is undergoing um, heart surgery. Would you pray for him? I grabbed her hand and I said, let's do it right now. And we talked to the Lord about the friend and about her and about the doctors and about the procedures and about her friend's healing. And I got the biggest hug afterward that made me feel as if I'd been part of the family forever. Is this how they see us? I just happen to be in the right place at the right time. But what that incident tells me is that there's a whole lot of residual faith out there. Not folks who are churchy, but folks who remember that there's a God. And maybe, maybe he still cares. And we'd like a place in that. And it happens in the places where you least expect. And what do we have to do to be invited to minister to that need? Speak the truth to our neighbor. Be faithful. Think no evil thoughts of our neighbor. Practice justice. Pursue peace. demonstrate the contrast between the world and the Kyriakoi. We see a picture of that world in Genesis 4, where Lamech, I think, proudly says, yeah, well, great-great-great-great-grandfather was avenged. I've been avenged 70 times 7. And Peter says, how many thousands years later, Lord, how often should I forgive? And Jesus, picking up on that line, says, 70 times 7. Our brother Andy Smith is a traveler on a mission and he's going to bring a testimony so I'm going to conclude very briefly with a line from the ancient church father Tertullian he was bishop in Carthage around the year 200 and Tertullian writes that he heard his neighbors saying Look how these Christians love one another. May our goal and our resolve be to so conduct ourselves to each other and to our neighbors that they say, look how these Christians love one another. Good day. There's a few of you that uh, know me from the last time I was here in Malaki, about three years ago. Uh, and I'm back here again. And this time I've been asked to share a little bit of my testimony, but like I said, the pastor, um, my, my testimony is a lot longer than 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm 41 years old. 
Um, so I just want to share something amazing uh, about what is faith. And truly, I, I, I just want to first just thank God that I'm here today um, in a new form, um, in a new understanding, um, with eyes open. And um, it's really for the love of God that I am here, because by my own means, I, I try to, I pretty much try to walk myself to death, um, trying to find my faith. It's something bigger than I am, um, because I come from a really tragic past um, where I really abused myself, my mind, and my temple. And it's funny how you speak of what is the temple, um, and this roof above us is, is only something to cover us from the weather, um, because if you read in the Bible, Jesus never spoke inside a temple of God that we created. He always spoke under the sky. Um, and for me, um, I really tried um, to understand my God um, because at a young age I really did, thought that God was the fault of all my problems, not all my answers. <laughs> and truly, for 18 years I have walked on faith and I have traveled more than 48, I tra 48 states in the United States and here in Mexico 29 states. Never thinking, oh, what am I going to do tomorrow? Never thinking, how am I going to survive? Because God said in the Bible, why do we worry about the things that we have when the birds and the animals don't worry about nothing and I provide everything? And I've really taken myself away from this whole false idea of what life is. And I, I truly believe that I have taken on a responsibility that more, more so than most. Because truly I, I, I have left everything I know, the security of what I had, and went off on faith. And truly I don't even know where I go half the time. I have a plan of what I want to do, but God always seems to change that. Like now, I've been here in Malachi going on two weeks. I have a job. I have everything beautiful. And God has, has put it into my mind, it's time for me to move on. And truly, I, I have no fear. <laughs> and it's really, really funny because um, some of you know that um, I travel with a dog. Well, now I have two. <laughs> and I have a, I have a mission to, um, that I made a, a deal with somebody I care about a lot that's over 900 kilometers away from me that I'll be there for their birthday um, and their birthday is in five days and what are most people going to say oh how am I going to do that I can't do it I can't do it I say of course I can I will be there if you tell me that for your birthday wish that you want me there God willing I will make it there and to close this up really quickly I made three deals with God to truly understand who my God is. And two times, he showed me, and this is the third time that I have asked him. Because my temple, for many years, I've used drugs, I've used alcohol, and I got going on almost two weeks now, clean of everything. Now I don't use anything, the only thing I had was cigarettes. And last night, after I thought about how far away this is, and what an impossible journey. And this is impossible by the love of God, <laughs> truly. I was smoking my last cigarette. Um, I sat there and said to God, okay God, I'm going to do this one more time with you. I'm going to ask you to please help me in this. Because for me, it, it, it's something of faith. That if I can make 900 kilometers in five days, nobody can tell me that there's something impossible in this world. Because nothing is impossible with God. I said, okay, God, let's do this one more time. This will be the third time that I asked for your help. And I told you right now that this cigarette I have right now is the last cigarette I'll put into my body. The last thing I will use to mark as the temple that I am. 
Just help me out, God. <laughs> Please, help me out. And if it's your will, let it be done. And honestly, guys, I woke up this morning like new. Like with energy, with, 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 with a new understanding. And I know that I will make it there. I have no fear that I have two dogs now. That, that honestly, I'm leaving without any money. Because honestly, I know he will provide, he always has. So why should I have fear of what's to come? When I know by his will, everything will, will happen as it should. But truly, it, it's a blessing to have become to know all of you. And I am truly grateful today because I have come back home. And I've been a long time away. And the darkness and, and, and everything other than what he wanted to me, but he's always loved me and always shown me the way. And that's why I'm here today. And that's why the pastor has asked me to share my testimony because most people can't walk on faith. Because if you don't have a penny in your pocket, how are you going to get to where you need to go? Me, it's not important if I don't have a penny in my pocket, something to eat. My dog's always had everything because my dog is fat. <laughs> He's, God has always provided like... My, my sister here asked me, well, what do you do for the dog? They said, well, I, I give it up to God. Oh, he's going to chase a rabbit. Well, no, you know, because honestly, he's always given me everything I needed to uh, give to him, my dog. And he's never given the opportunity for him to chase an animal and kill him, thank God. <laughs> because for me, I, I, I don't believe in that. Um, so for me, I don't worry. I'm happy. I have found myself again. It's taken over 68 States walking on faith to truly understand who I am. I'm the Son of God. I am blessed. I am grateful. And only because of Him am I alive. I haven't done anything in my life. All my journeys, all my adventures, I was just like in the I don't know what story it is in the Bible, but about the donkey. You know, that pretty much we're just here to carry the weight of what He gives us because we don't carry anything more than what. He puts on us. If we truly carry the problems of the world, we'd be down there. Because we wouldn't be able to carry the weight of what that cross weighs. That's why Jesus Christ was the only person in this world to carry the weight of the cross as he did. And for me truly, I, I understand. You know, today I, I feel healthy. I feel alive. <laughs> and I'm free of all of problems, of self, because truly he, he loves me, he loves all of us, and he, he has me here today in front of you guys to show you that I'm your neighbor, <laughs> and you guys are my neighbor, and I don't know any of you, but I love you, I truly do, I am too, truly grateful to be able to share this message because... <laughs> For so long, I've been so selfish. I didn't want to share with nobody. This is my journey. This is my life. This is my adventure with God, not yours. But lately, doors have been opening up where I can share a little bit of part of me about this faith that was a little seed. Now it's a huge tree of life. And for me, it's, it's, a, it's the biggest drug I have in the world, my connection with God. Because <laughs> truly, without Him, for me, I don't feel right sitting here listening to the day-to-day -day life of humans because I look for the blessings and I feel more comfortable talking to God than a human being because for me I have no problems because he's taken them all away he's made me free to be here in front of you today looking different I pretty much if some of you remember me the last time I was here I didn't look this young <laughs> Or feel this great. I was suffering. But sometimes we have to suffer for that. Sometimes we have to go through things to get this, this seed of faith to begin to grow. Thank you. Andy, some of the brothers come and pray with us. Thank you.
Thank you, Lord, for this our brother Andrew. Thank you that he found himself in you. Thank you for his journey that he's come, the journey that he's going. Be with him on that journey. Give him your Holy Spirit. Minister to him and minister through him to others. We know you'll meet his needs. God bless him. Amen. We lift him up and we pray your protection around him. We travel with this congregation. Lord, that you will make a way for the seems to be no way. But we pray freely that you will pave this path for him to give him direction and <laughs> but like I said, my, my dog is always in the back, and I'm sitting <laughs> God has got to look out for a little bit better than me. <laughs> oh no, you're probably a good being skinny. <laughs> yeah, no. We will uh, continue with the offering uh, now. Go ahead, Rod. token to you, asking you to use it for your good and the good of your people. Amen. When uh, Rosa asked me where, for her special song, The Old Rugged Cross, it seems to be so fitting right now as, as Andy shares his testimony how he came to the cross and how the cross gave him strength and forgiveness. So let's send, stand up and uh, send, sing with us uh, the old rugged cross. The bulletin will only show you the first verse, the second one, and third one are missing. For some reason we have to switch. So if you can sing this song from memory, please join us.